Hello, travelers. Thanks for joining us. Like Louis Comfort Tiffany and other artists of the 19th century before us, today we will be looking at and drawing inspiration from the art of Japan. More specifically, we will look at how the West was introduced to Japanese art, the popularity of Japanese textiles and fabrics, and a doll making technique called kimekome. Here's curator and collection manager Jennifer Talheimer to introduce us to this concept. In the 1850s, Japan opened trade for the first time to the Western world after centuries of self-imposed isolation. Japan's culture and art traditions had blossomed with little to no influence outside their own ideas. They focused on brilliant color and patterning rich with local inspiration. Japanese artwork was first introduced to mass Western audience by traders exhibiting in 1862 at the World Exposition in London. But by the World Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia in 1876, seen in the image here, Japan had taken the reins and created a booth reflective of their own identity, presenting ceramics, textiles, and metalwork unlike visitors had experienced before. The resulting, well, mania, referred to as Japanisma, was eagerly adapted by the West through the production of goods made in the taste of Japan. Western manufacturers and artists took inspiration from material they had seen at the 1876 World's Fair, reinterpreted it, and applied it as they saw it onto objects familiar to people in Europe and America. This plate on the left and the book cover on the right show the elements which appealed to artists and designers during the 1870s and 1880s. Note on these pieces, shapes often emblematic of Japan, like a fan you can see on the book cover. A complex layering of decorations segmented into unique framed vignettes, as you can see on the plate. Here, we see an artist and a manufacturer drawing from another of the elements observed in the Japanese display. Floral vignettes. These sprays of flowers are apple blossoms. The plate on the left and the watercolor on the right by American artist Fidelia Bridges. And here we see the vines and leaves in grapevine and chicory, the grape arbor, and the dessert plate decorated by Eleanor Ferguson McCain grouped to one side of their respective compositions a tribute to the asymmetrical design popularized by Japanese art. This painting by William Merritt Chase, made in 1883, depicts Dora Wheeler dressed in brilliantly colored silks against a boldly colored textile wall hanging. Dora was the daughter of Candace Wheeler, who was a tastemaker in New York City known for her embroidered fabrics and textile knowledge. Here we can see she was a great admirer of Japanese fabric. While the bold colors and rich patterning are conveyed by paint, the link to the weir's appreciation of the actual Japanese textiles is evident. So what was it that made Japanese fabrics catch the eye of Western consumers? As with so many things in the 19th century, fashion was changing. It was stepping away from restrictive and form-fitting and embracing freedom of movement. Kimono, unlike Western-style clothing, are cut and sewn flat without regard to the body's curves. Kimono were not about accentuating the body of the wearer, but showing off the be beauty of the kimono itself. Visitors to Japan during the Meiji period bought kimono and other textiles and bringing them back to the West, where the style and complex design motifs became wildly popular and a standard part of Paris's haute couture fashion scene. The textiles being purchased by Western visitors at the turn of the century came predominantly from the Edo period, also known as the Tokugawa Jidai, a span of time in which there was peace, economic prosperity, and a renewed interest in enjoying arts and culture. People of all classes were wearing colorful kimono, and fabric scraps from these kimono were being repurposed to decorate traditional Japanese dolls. Dolls of all types have always been an important part of Japanese culture, and kimekome dolls are no exception. Female kimekome dolls are often part of celebrations from March 3rd, a holiday known as Hina Matsuri, or Girls' Day. Samurai dolls, and dolls of Japanese folk heroes, are part of celebrations for Kodomono Hi, or Children's Day, celebrated on May 5th. 
The 12 animals of the zodiac are also a popular part of celebrating the new year, and even traditional Western holidays, like Christmas, have their own kimikome dolls. It is the tucking of the fabric onto the body of the doll that sets kimikome apart as its own doll-making technique, and a special tucking spatula is used to fill the carved grooves with rice starch glue and then tuck in the edges of the fabric. This video, from Ike Dane Nippon, shows the process of creating a kimekome doll. Ike Dane Nippon is an online sightseeing guide that provides information on unique ways to experience Japan. They host this and other informational videos on their YouTube channel. Kimekome is a popular hobby. There are many online kimekome tutorials, and many Japanese companies sell kimekome doll kits that can be assembled at home. There are even places in Japan that conduct doll making classes. The fabrics and patterns popular in kimekome and adopted by the West continue to engage the eye and intrigue the mind. The project we suggest on our activities page deviates from the more traditional processes of kimekome, but it still provides an opportunity to create something in the kimekome style from easy to find materials. Please take a look at Create and Explore Activities.